Hi everybody, this is Alchemist 2, and I'm back again with another movie review. Recently, I was on my DVR looking for anything that had David Tennant in it. I think he's going to be in a series called Orphan Black, coming in March. <clears throat> but the DVR doesn't have that available yet, so I have to wait until the middle of next uh, month <coughs> in order to start recording it. But I came upon this rather quaint film, a Scottish film. <laughs> Imagine that. It's actually very apropos considering David's true origin, which is Scotland. Um, the movie itself is called The Decoy Bride. And David plays this character named James, and he has this lady named Laura, who is a honeybee of sorts. She just falls for any man that seems to be well off. So she seems to be kind of a gold digger. Um, there's another woman that is uh, taken to be a part of this whole scheme to uh, <clears throat> to marry James. And what <laughs> what follows next is hilarious. It's, it's just absolute comedy gold. And it's really quite a cute movie. And it's very whimsical and very romantic and just a lot of fun. And if you're a fan of David Tennant, then you have to see The Decoy Bride because I think that he does some of his best work here. And at first he seems kind of like a very arrogant character, like he doesn't care that much about himself and he seems really snarky and kind of cocky. But later on you realize that he does have a heart and he's not an arrogant jerk. And he he feels <laughs> and he does care and he is altruistic and he uh, I won't say what happens because I just think it's, a, it's such a sweet love story and I was just so moved by it and I, I just think it's it's just such an uplifting film and plus I just the, the Scottish accent it well yeah it's it's kind of part of my heritage so just hearing him think, oh, this feels really whimsical, and maybe I could probably do it, like, oh, no, this is more of an Irish accent, but Scottish accent is much more difficult to do. I can do Irish accent in my sleep, but um, this, uh, this film is just absolutely remarkable, and it's really quite magnificent, and uh, as far as the movie is concerned, I give it two thumbs up and five stars, and if you're a Tenet fan, then you must absolutely see it. Um, just put in David Tennant in your DVR and then the decoy bride will show up. And if you see Fright Night, avoid at all costs. Because even though David Tennant is dashingly sexy, <laughs> just don't even bother watching Fright Night because it's a remake of a terrible cult film anyway. Well, the original, according to my friend, was the best version. What the original really is, typically, but I watched uh, the remake and I didn't care for it at all. It was just ridiculous and I would love to see it riffed. I think if somebody riffed that film, it would be hysterical. Uh, <laughs> but um, just the basic uh, premise of the decoy bride is, well, it's pretty self-explanatory from the way that it is um, depicted from the title. And uh, it's, it's kind of like something you would read in one of those entertainment magazines or see on uh, Entertainment Tonight. It has that kind of vibe with it. And it it kind of goes into the sensationalism of uh, it couples and that, but it, it's more about the unexpectedness of love, and there there's truth to this. And I th I know this is probably going to make me sound like a sentimentalist, and I am a, a hopeful romantic, and I do believe that love at first sight exists. But the whole reaction that occurs with that is uh, pheromonal or a chemical. And if you realize that you have a lot of different things in common, as well as the, the chemistry, then you know this is the person that you should be with. And everything else is pretty uh, copacetic. But 
I've never had that happen, so I, I really don't know what I'm talking about. But one day I'm pretty sure I will. I'm certain that I will at some point in my life. Uh, I'm still young, <laughs> and I have hope for the future. And I know that uh, a few people will smile on me one of these days. <laughs> at least, uh, fingers crossed, that's that's my intention. Um, I want to do a little bit of an update. Uh, I'm currently working on a story called Humankind. If you've seen the trailer for After Earth, which is written by one of my favorite authors of all time, and he's actually co... well, he is producing it. He's not co-producing it. Peter David is responsible for this work of art, and I'm really excited to see it. It's coming out in March, and the, the book isn't out until March, and it's coinciding with the release of the film, which I think was absolute genius. But it's kind of like After Earth, but it's different because my premise deals with a man who has cryogenically frozen himself. When he wakes up, he doesn't remember who he is or why he's in the lab coat and whatnot. He later figures out that he's a scientist and he, he did this because one of his gut instincts is that he wanted to prove that human beings were resilient and they could survive being uh, frozen like that. Um, excuse me. He also locates a faction of humans in this new world, and uh, the the new planet is called Rigel 247. It's a few light years from Earth. Uh, the Earth that we know and love is no longer viable, so people have had to travel in a rocket. Well, what was left of humankind? It's the year 3000. Um, and there is some technology that is on this Rigel 247, and their androids don't have really internet or anything like that, nothing that's far-reaching, like satellite communication or anything like that. It's it's more along the lines of android ser servo bots that help people and are fountains of information, basically uh, auto, auto, uh, autonomous um, librarians, kind of like... Uh, they're, they're helpers, they're assistants, and um, they can emote as well as human, but they're not they're tep they're not human at all. Um, uh, I'm not really sure what else uh, I will be writing and in, uh, involved with this story, but um, it's something that I came up with when I was dreaming, and it was so vivid. I, I was the the scientist that was waking up from cryo sleep and just. You know, I could feel the ice crystals coming off of my body. It was the weirdest thing ever. I thought, whoa, this would make a really good story. So that's why I'm writing Humankind, and that's what's called Humankind. And there's a reason why I'm calling it that. It's kind of like a play of words. Uh, the other story that I am writing is called um, On Tap. I have not really finished writing that yet. I'm thinking of writing... Shifting Sand, the, the story about the no, the nomads. Uh, they're called the the lions, and uh, they are magicians, and they can subsist off of magic and basically create their own water and whatnot. And they only have one alchemist, and the alchemist is is especially important because she is the only one who can produce gold for bartering and trade. Uh, alchemist is a dime a dozen. <laughs> Sorry for the pun, but she's a uh, very integral part of their commerce and uh, marketing. Uh, plus, she's also a healer. So if they have any issues with um, ailments of any kind, she heals them because the typical magicians, they, they can't really heal. Uh, they're too busy using magic with... Uh, water and th other things that, that are not necessarily readily available for them in, in the desert. Uh, I'm going to write a story that's a romantic comedy. It's going to be called uh, Call Me Irresponsible. It's basically about a 21-year-old who gets all soused up at a, a party and he, he sleeps with this girl and he gets her pregnant. <laughs> uh, and then the girl later tells him that you've gotten me pregnant come and 
face your responsibility like a man. And he really hasn't faced responsibility for a long time. And he doesn't really feel like he is ready to become a father yet. But he, he decides to go along with her agreement and they get married. And um, he realizes that he, he loves her. And then they they fall in love more and more and more. And it's kind of like life as, you, uh, life as we know it, but it's uh, a little bit different. So I thought of doing a story like that. Uh, Warm Bodies is coming out this weekend, and I'm probably not going to see it because my dad is not a fan of zombie films, so uh, that's a no-go. If I had somebody here who was a, a zombie fan who could go with me, I would be more than happy. I don't want to go to the cinema by myself. Um, but on the 5th, Identity Thief is coming out, and I really want to see it because it looks absolutely hilarious. Um, and of course, on Valentine's Day, I will be seeing Die Hard. Oh yeah! So, looking forward to that. But basically, that's pretty much all I've been up to, including uh, my work and uh, just getting myself all caught up with the uh, the homework that I had from last semester and my work kept me from getting all that done which I felt really dumb about but I'm almost done with it and I'm going to I'm going to turn it back in and see uh what I can do with it uh that's pretty much it so till next time live long and prosper